Hello students, welcome to the business law session for the BBA 5th semester. So in our previous class we had commenced with the discussion on consideration and we had seen what you mean by the term consideration. Consideration is the most important element of the contract. Without consideration there cannot be a contract. This is the general rule. And as uh, there are certain exceptions which we are going to take up in our here another class. But today, after studying about the definition of the consideration, we will be studying certain rules framed by the law for the consideration. The, there, should, there are certain rules for the consideration. At the very outset, remember the consideration must be lawful consideration. That is, it should be permitted by law, it should not be forbidden by the law. So, whenever we use the term consideration in the contract, bear in the mind that you should add that prefix word here, legal, lawful, legal consideration, lawful consideration. This should be always mentioned there. So, this is here the mainly the basic guideline for the consideration that has to be passed between the parties. This has to be remembered. It should not be here permitted here. It should not be forbidden by law. If in case if that consideration is permitted, it will defeat the provisions of the law, then that becomes unlawful consideration. If the consideration is moving here, but that will defeat the provisions of the law, then we call it as unlawful consideration. It is forbidden by the law and then you cannot make it a contract there. This aspect should be borne in the mind by the students. Now, we will move to the rules regarding consideration. What are the different rules framed here by the law for the consideration? Here one decided cases we are going to discuss. That is one very important case. Then I will come to it later. First, Consideration must move at the desire of the promisor. So, in a contract, the promisor, the offerer, he should make here the consideration. He should mainly suggest the consideration. So, the person who wants to make an offer or proposal, he has to make that proposal. The proposal to make the consideration must move at the desire of the promisor. Now, for example, A wants to sell his bicycle to B for 1000 rupees. So, the consideration is moving here at the desire of the promisor. So, who is the promisor? A is the promisor. So, at his desire, the consideration is moving. So, that is what the law says. It should move from the here, desire of the Promisor. That is the first rule laid down. Second, consideration may move from promise or any other person. It can move from promise or any other person. Consideration here, the word that are they are using is that they are mainly using the word promise or the any other person. So any other person when you are saying this. He must be a part of that contract. Though here he is a stranger to the consideration, here he is a part of the contract, then he is mainly eligible. The consideration moving will be considered. So he should not be a stranger to the contract. The stranger to the contract here cannot move the consideration. So that is what the law says. He can be stranger to the consideration, but he cannot be stranger to the contract. So any person who is a part of the contract can move this here consideration. That is what the law says. So here you have got that case. The name of the case is Chinnaya versus Ramaya case. The Chinnaya versus Ramaya case is one of the most prominent cases relating to this fact. So I will narrate the facts of this case. Try to understand students what are the facts of the case. A a old lady, a, a old lady executed her will in favor of her daughter. 
The first fact I am giving you. A. A old lady executed yeah, the will in favor of her daughter, transferring all the property to her daughter. This is the first fact. Second, with a direction, with a condition. So the lady here yeah, put a condition. What is the condition she put? So every month the daughter has to pay rupees 5000 to B, brother of A. So B is the brother of A and he should be given rupees 5000 every month by the daughter. This was the condition. So she received the property, she will receive the property only if she accepts this condition with a direction that here every month the daughter should pay 5000 rupees to be who is the brother of A. This is what was mentioned in the here death. And in the same on the same day, the daughter executed a deed where she accepted she will pay 5000 rupees to be. The daughter also exhale here maybe executed a deed. Here saying that she is ready to give 5000 rupees here per month to be. This was a milita. So for six months the daughter paid the money to be. But later she refused to pay the money. When we asked her for the money, she refused to pay the money there. So here it was stated that here why she refused was on what ground she refused was that no consideration was moving from B to her. No consideration was moving to her. Now look at here B here he she is paying the daughter is paying 5000 rupees monthly to B but in return is the daughter getting anything? Here return if you see no. But she has to pay this monthly the 5000 rupees otherwise she has already received that consideration consideration has already passed to her the daughter has got the consideration what is that the property has come to her she has become the owner of the property only on the condition that she will give this 5000 rupees to be so that is the consideration has already moved to her now there is no necessity of consideration so that is what it may move from any other person here, mainly, here it may be promising or any other person it may be, but the person must not be stranger to the contract. Here he is a part of the contract. So the daughter has become the owner of the property of A only when she has agreed and executed a deed in favor of B that she will pay 5000 rupees monthly. This is mainly what she added. Now she has refused, the court held that. Here B is entitled to recover the amount. B can recover the amount. Whatever is due, here he can recover that amount. So this was mainly the case that was there mainly and it was decided. So consideration must move at the desire of the promisor. It may move here from the promisee or any other person. Here is that decided case of Chinmaya versus Ramaya case. So, do remember this, you can have a question on this aspect. So, this is the second important rule. The third one is, consideration need not be adequate. This, earlier we have discussed this. It need not be adequate. Law does not consider the adequacy of the consideration moving to the parties. It is not bothered at all about this. So, what the law says is that, there must be consideration, both the parties must get something in return. Now for example, A has sold his motorbike to B for 5000 rupees when that motorbike is worth 20,000 rupees. Law will not question you why you have sold it for 5000. Why you have sold it for 5000, the law will not ask you the question. It need not be adequate. But both the parties must have received something in return. That is what is required by the law. So adequacy is not a question to measure the consideration. This is not a here the parameter 
to know that the concentration here is what uh, we are mainly measure the parameter or the concentration here. So what the loss is the adequacy doesn't matter, it is only concentration must may move. It is at the desire of the promisor itself the concentration is moving. He may put anything. The here the good work may be here one lakh, but he wants to sell it at 25,000 rupees. It is he and his will and wish. It is he are worth uh, 25,000 and he wants to sell it at 30,000. It is his will and wish. So adequacy doesn't matter. If the other person wants it, he can accept it, otherwise he can reject it. That is left to the promise. But uh, the question of adequacy does not rise. Now, for example, uh, here the good which is work of uh, the goods which are work of uh, 20,000. Here he offers to sell it to B for 40,000 rupees. B cannot go to the court of law and say that uh, this is uh, here mainly imbalanced consideration. Here the worth is 20,000 and he is selling for 40,000. If you want you accept it, the law will say. Otherwise you reject it. It is your choice to do it. So adequacy here, it may be more, it may be less. The law will not matter about the adequacy. So that is not taken as a parameter to measure the consideration. So the need not be adequate. That is the third important rule. Fourth one is consideration must be real, not illusionary. It must be real. This is what the word has been used. Real means here that it is mainly possibility. The possibility is there. Now for example, say look at this uh, maybe the example x says by his divine power he will find a treasure for y is the consideration here illusionary or real so the answer is it is illusionary it is not possible to find out a treasure by the divine power it is considered to be here illusionary and not real it is not practical, it is impractical. That is not possible. Likewise, sir, here M says to M, by my here divine power, I will put the life in a dead person, which is not possible. For that, if you give me here 10 lakhs, I will put here the life in a dead person. It is not possible. The consideration is called as illusionary. It is illusionary consideration. It is not possible for a person here to put life to a dead person. Uh, that is what they what we call such the consideration is unreal. The consideration is not real. It is illusionary. That is what the word is used by the lawyer. Like this, you should remember here the reality, practicality should be there of the consideration. That is why it is used. Consideration must be real. These are mainly the fourth important rule. Consideration may be past, present or future. Now, this is a very much a thing. When you have seen the definition itself, it was a very long definition and by the wordings that were used, you can come to know that there was a, the consideration might have already moved. <coughs> the consideration might have already moved. For example, in this case, Chennai versus Ramaya case, already the property had been come to the daughter, it had been already moved, the concentration had been moved, it's a past concentration. It is a past concentration. This is mainly, it may be present, present is nothing but you can give a good example, you uh, here, you go to a TV shop, you pay the money and uh, take the good. So the concentration has moved immediately, that is present. You have received the good for the price of the here whatever you have paid so the price in the form of money what you have paid you have got the goods so also the mainly the seller who has sold the goods he has got the price of that goods which he has sold in the form of money there. that is what we find this is here called as the present consideration the consideration is moving simultaneously the consideration is moving simultaneously. Likewise, consideration may be future. The consideration may be future. For example, here the consideration is said to be future here, here in the case of uh, taking grocery on credit. 
taking groceries on credit. He will take the groceries on credit and says that at the end of the month, in the first week, he will pay it. So that is a future consideration. For goods, whatever he has received, that person will receive the consideration only in future. This is called as future. The consideration is moving to future. So consideration may be past. Already it might have gone. Or it may be present or it may take here the nature of the future. This is very clear from the, here, the definition what we have studied. The definition makes it very clear the consideration may take any form. That is why this is the last rule that is there. Consideration may be past, present or future. So these are the here, important rules that are there for the consideration. So once uh, you know that uh, the consideration, so when this is as I told you, it is a 5 marks question. From your examination point of view, 5 marks question will be asked. The question I told you, state the roots of uh, the consideration. So when you start, first just two lines you mention what is consideration. Two lines you mention it. What you mean by the term consideration. So consideration is nothing but that the parties who have entered into a contract will get something in return. The something in return will be there. They will have something. This is in two lines you explain what is You need not give that full definition. Just in two lines. Consideration may be here, this, here mainly getting something in return to each other. Now there you can just mention A has sold his bicycle 2000 rupees to B and B has paid the price. B has received the goods for the price he has paid and A for selling his goods he has received the price. This is the money. This is what is consideration. Both have got something in it. The adequacy is not a question there. Secondly what you have to mention is when you start uh, immediately don't come to the rules. Secondly what you have to mention that here the consideration must be permitted by law, it should be lawful. If it is forbidden by law, then that consideration makes here the valid, here invalid. The valid contract will become invalid. That is why the thing is that it should be permitted by law. Now, these examples I have given you here earlier also, where X hires Y to shoot Z for they are paying for a payment of 5 lakhs. Now the consideration is when the year is here unlawful. The consideration for what money he is giving for to do an illegal act, forbidden act. So consideration, the object is also unlawful, consideration moving is also unlawful. So it should be lawful. The second point you have to explain there. That is the second point. Then the law has framed certain rules and these are the following rules what you have got. And when you explain that, the second point, you have to give that explanation about the case. The case should be explained. Chinnaya versus Ramaya case, which is a most important case. These are the rules. Then you have to frame the rules here. So in this way, you have to write the answer. This is one question in the consideration. The next question we are going to discuss in our next class is no consideration, no contract, state the exceptions. This will be in my next video we will be presenting.